what we're going to do is, I think in a lot of these things, when they kick off a building or do a ribbon cutting, uh, we're going to turn on a neon sign. Um, about uh, two years ago, uh, we took the standard made in Atlanta, made in Italy, made in Detroit, which you see a lot of places, and we added some soul to it. So made with soul in Atlanta kind of became uh, something that a few years ago we put on a sticker, and uh, everyone put that sticker on their laptop. Two people got it tattooed on their body. And now the mayor is about to flip the switch on the neon sign that we hope will be, um, you know, shined in this building for years to come. But the guy who gave us the neon sign said it should last 40 years. Uh, so we have a 40 year timeline for this made with soul in Atlanta uh, sign. And so we're gonna do that instead of cutting some tape. And then we'll sit down and do an honor review. So the 59th mayor of the city of Atlanta, Mayor Kasim Reed. So all it takes is just one simple pull right here, and it'll never be turned off again. I promise. Right, yep. Ready? One. First of all, we're gonna do it. Ten. <laughs> so it's gonna be one, two, three. Smile. I like that. One, two, three. All right, now we're actually gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't toy with us, man. Come on. I do this a lot. One, two, three. First question is softball. Is this the, the, the best sign you've ever done an interview in front of? Uh, it's definitely the hottest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to throw you one more softball. Yes. How's Atlanta doing and how's downtown doing? Um, I think Atlanta's at a moment. I think that, um, you know, there was an article today that just said uh, clearly Atlanta is ascendant. And the reason that that is the case is um, really because of folks like you and the people in this room. But if you look at where we are as a city, and we just haven't been where we are right now in quite some time. You know, we have uh, the highest levels of construction activity that we've had uh, in our history. It's 2.9 billion. It's greater than it was during the Centennial Olympic Games. We're adding population, including in areas like downtown Atlanta, in a way that we have not before. Um, a few blocks from here, we're getting ready to build a $90 million post properties development. I don't think anybody would have thought that would be happening in downtown Atlanta. A few blocks from here, we have the Microsoft Innovation Center coming into Flatiron City. It's one of two in the United States of America. I don't think folks thought that uh, that would happen. Um, we're getting ready to renovate Phillips Arena not far from you. We're probably going to come in with about a half a billion in new residential construction. And I just think that um, it's certainly a moment uh, for the city of Atlanta. And you are an essential part of it, and the technology sector is an essential part of it, which is why I'm sitting in front of this neon sign right now. <laughs> I was going to ask, at what point does Switch Arts get into your, your speech where you say we have 150 B2C focused founders in downtown Atlanta in an old building? Would you, you want to know the good news, Michael? Um, switch yards is gonna make it into my state <laughs> and city speech, which is the real deal. All right. That's the one I need. You wanna be in the speech. You wanna be in the speech, you wanna be in the state of the city speech. So <laughs> switch yards, um, I was working on my speech before I came over here. Switch yards is gonna be in it. I'm so excited about this. I mean nineteen thousand square feet of amazing space. Uh, and I think I saw a company that I might wanna raise a little money for. Uh, they had a business upstairs uh, called Split which I thought was pretty hot. Uh, but if you look at what's going on, uh, Secretary Jack Lew, the Secretary of Treasury, was here, I think, last week. And uh, we were over at Georgia Tech looking at startups. Everybody knows what's going on at, uh, at the Atlanta Technology Village. And it just goes on and on. And now with the work uh, that you uh, and David are doing, uh, I just think it's just going to, that's all we got to do is keep getting behind you. That's why we're uh, believing in everything Eloise is doing. We've invested in housing. Um, for people in the technology sector. We've invested in Startup Atlanta. Uh, we changed uh, the tax policies in the city of Atlanta to really benefit entrepreneurs. So while, you know, one of the things I don't do is I don't play at. So I don't 
you know, I don't pretend to be a technologist or a sophisticated user of technology, but I tell you what, um, after spending some time in Davos with Sheryl Sandberg, I flew back uh, to the city of Atlanta, flew out to Silicon Valley, Palo, Palo Alto, San Francisco, took 20, 20, 22 meetings. The city of Atlanta is now uh, the eighth most important city for VC investment. We hit 500 million in 2014. We will exceed that number for 2015. Um, Cox Enterprises is now doing a, a, an incubator over in uh, Pine City Market. None of it hotter than uh, switch yards. It all, it all kind of adds up. If you all remember, Pot City Market used to be a dilapidated building that was surrounded by a fence. It was costing us a million dollars just to keep it shuttered. Um, we were the ones that did a deal with Jamestown because I saw what Jamestown uh, was doing at Chelsea Market in New York. That's how Pot City Market came to be because Google was in Chelsea, uh, Chelsea Market in Atlanta, and Jamestown was an Atlanta business. So I called Matt Bronfman and I said, you know, Matt, why don't you do something like that in the city of Atlanta? When Jonathan Bush was looking where he was gonna relocate Athena Health, he's now bringing Athena Health from the suburbs into the heart of the city of Atlanta. Twitter's the same way. I started my day um, with the leaders of Google Fiber. So Atlanta is going to be the biggest application of Google Fiber in the United States of America. So, while I might you know, not be too good with my fingers on the phone, I do know how to get stuff done and I do know how to attract capital. And so and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to play my part, be in my lane. I told you that was a softball. Great answer. I knew you were going to be prepared for that. All right, uh, the next ones are a little harder. Um, uh, we heard you're an entrepreneur. Uh, your team kind of ratted you out that you were an early entrepreneur. Let's hear about your, your first story starting companies. Um, first business I had, um, I was like 12 or 13 years old. We had a neighborhood in Southwest Atlanta with big yards. I started a lawnmower, lawnmower service. I took 50 to 75 bucks and had a lawnmower company called Help the Kid. I was little, I would go, that was my slogan. So it so kind of like this. Yeah. Okay. So my had a little card that said, help the kid. I would knock on the door, and we charged uh, $21 for the front yards, $28 for front and back. And then I would get the order, and big kids would come and cut the grass. So I was 12 <laughs> 11 when I did that. When I was 16 years old, I started a gold jewelry company. People don't remember it these days, but Quads remembers back in the day, um, every black kid in Atlanta had a gold herringbone chain. So um, I took my money from the lawnmower business and I went to the apparel mart. Back then you had to make an order of more than $2,000 to go to the apparel mart. And I went and I bought a bunch of chains, gold chains, and I took them to Ben Hill United Methodist Church and I sold them with about a 200 to 300% markup. Then I went to Howard University and I got, at that time the craze was Women were wearing men's boxer shorts with university logos on the butts. And so I got, uh, yeah, I know, it was sexy. And so um, I got the contracts for university bookstores, and so it helped. And then, uh, and then my dad told me I had to go legit, and so I went to law school. I was going to say, why did you have a good thing there? Sounds like you had a good thing going on. I had a, good, I had a nice little run. Uh, if you all ever want to see a funny joke, um, you'll look, uh, I was on the cover of Black Enterprise Magazine when I was like 20 years old, and I had a high top fade that will rival any box high top fade that you see on anybody today. It was, it was nice to have that much hair. Felt real good. <laughs> I've seen that picture. Um, all right, so, so startups, you just heard some pitches from a few. They're all trying to get traction. They're trying to get their first customers. How'd you get your first 100 supporters when you ran for mayor in 2009? Um, door to door and to be relentless and to believe in your dream. Um, you know, I'm not much different from you. I wanted to be mayor of the city of Atlanta since I was 13 years old. Speaking of my high top fade, uh, Andrew Young spoke at a men's day service at Ben Hill United Methodist Church that my mother forced me to attend. And then when he got through speaking, he put his hand in my high top fade and I believe, I was just like, this man, what's this man touching my hand for? <laughs> And so my mother explained to me who Andrew Young was, and I went home, and back then, we actually had these things called Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> Everybody had one in their house. So I put it off the shelf, I read about Ambassador Young, 
And then seven years later, he's on the board of Howard University, sitting right beside me. And I was thinking about taking a job in New York, going to work for Time Warner. And he said, you ought to come home because Atlanta's going to need a mayor like you. He told me that when I was 20 years old. And on my 40th birthday, he was sitting beside me when I got elected mayor. So just like you all, I mean, I had a dream. So as focused and as passionate as you all are uh, in the technology space and on building terrific businesses, I feel that way about public service. And I think that um, you all are going to be a key part of the tapestry of the city of Atlanta. But, but my story is much different than yours. It's like, it's why my eyes pop open at 5, 30, 6 in the morning on their own. I imagine the same way yours do when you're working on um, a new idea or a new product. Because uh, I absolutely love you know, what, I, what I do. So you're active on, on Twitter. Who, who, no you have, who are your, who, who's, who's the, your best follow on Twitter that you um, really enjoy reading their stuff? You know what? I read so much Twitter. I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't really have a best. I'm just like, I love the engagement of it. You know, at first, um, I really didn't enjoy it very much. But I think now I have 113,000 followers, um, you know, 44, 45,000 folks on Facebook. So I just enjoy the interaction. The one thing that you have to avoid when you become mayor is just being insulated and in a bubble. I mean, you've had a lot of success, so you know the more successful you become, um, the more BS you hear because you're not really living in reality. Everybody's nice, hello mayor, how you doing? You doing great, and, uh, and I find that in the social media space, that's totally not happening. So, I mean, <laughs> People, people say stuff. <laughs> and so I think that that is good uh, because it keeps you that little, that energy keeps you uh, grounded a bit. So I don't really have a favorite, uh, but you know, I give as good as I get. So. All right, let's do a few quick uh, Atlanta questions. Yes. Kind of quick, quick answers. What we have? One meal in Atlanta, where, where are you going? Is that, a, is, that a, is that a loaded question? You probably know. Uh, what what's in Atlanta? Uh, I'm going to Busy Bee. All right. Soul Food Restaurant. Uh, favorite peach tree? There's 26 of them. Uh, <laughs> my favorite peach tree would be a peach tree in 14, right in the heart of Midtown. So my mom lives. I know your folks are here. They must be beaming with pride. <laughs> Michael's parents are in the house tonight. <laughs> How are you doing? Good to meet you on the floor. I'm for the birthday. <laughs> Did well on your Italian pronunciation. Yeah. Um, all right, some more Atlanta questions. What's your What's your favorite childhood memory of Atlanta? You moved to Atlanta when you were how old were you? Then? I was six months old. Do you was, have? I was a little blob. <laughs> Do you have a favorite memory of, of your youth in Atlanta? Oh man, favorite memory of my youth uh, in the city of Atlanta um, probably was uh, spending time with my dad uh, at an old pizza place uh, that used to be where the JR Crickets used to be across the street from the bar yeah. My dad and my brothers, that's where we used to eat pizza. And uh, when I was there, they, my brothers, I'm the baby in the family, there's four boys, they took a piece of cheese pizza and layered the cheese pizza with hot peppers and watched a child bite into it. And all that. <laughs> but uh, I have terrific memories because that's what we used to go on the weekends. What's your, what's your, I know we got only got a few minutes left, but what's your normal, you probably don't have a normal day, but what's your, your average kind of day look like? What time do you get up? What time? This is very relevant. Yeah, to start I, run, uh, I run about, my eyes open up about 5.30 every morning. I run six days a week. And my day is normally in uh, about 10 o'clock. So my car, my driver normally pulls up to my house at night and drops me off maybe 10, 30, 11 guys. And so we run from, I'm up at 5, 30, 6 o'clock, returning emails, text messages, preparing for the day, and then it's game on. The terrific thing about being a mayor is uh, almost every day you're dealing with about 15 different issues on a variety of subjects. So I'm doing everything from talking to Tony Resler about um, what's going on at Phillips Arena to talking to the, the hotel developer of Hard Rock Cafe uh, to meeting Eloisa to find out how we're going to um, start seed funds to being on the phone with Mutar Kent about some issue related to Coca-Cola to negotiating an extension of the airline lease with Richard Anderson 
to making sure we have enough uh, snow plows for the snowstorm that's coming up, to listen to a person who has a pothole in front of their house. So it's an exciting day because um, you are dealing with 15 topics. All of them are important to the person that is bringing them to you, and they expect the best version of you. Because most people um, don't typically get to meet their mayor, and when they do, they've been waiting for some time. So you have a burden to make sure that when that person spends time with you, that they're not getting the leftovers, they're getting the best version of yourself. And I try to do that every day. Great answer. All right, I want to be sensitive of your time. I know, I know we only have a minute or two left, but uh, three years ago when I first started talking about opening up a, I'll tell you a quick story, started, started talking about opening up a B2C focused building in Atlanta. Uh, a lot of people said you can't do it here, go to New York, go to San Francisco, but Atlanta's not a B2C town, we're a B2B town. And here we are three years later, switch yards is open, the neon sign is on, and the mayor's here. So, so as an entrepreneur, this is the kind of stuff you feed off of. Uh, so anyway, it's a great day in switch yards, but this is just the beginning because three years from now when I see you, hopefully you'll ask me how those companies do and we need to produce results. So this is now, throw this out to everyone. We have to produce results. Uh, this is just the beginning. It's kind of like we just raised money. The mayor's here, it's a great day. Uh, and now we got to produce results. Um, uh, so that the next time we see the mayor, he'll say, wow, that, that little two-person company is now one of these companies in your, your, your state uh, speech. Uh, so anyway, thanks for coming, and I'll leave it with this. One last thing. Um, uh, everyone at Switch Yards has a membership, and what, what comes with the membership is a coffee mug with your name on it. I love it. And you're only drinking out of your coffee mug. Um, and then you also get an access card, and the access card says, make something beautiful today. So we have a coffee mug that says Mayor Reed, but you gotta leave it here, though. I got you can't it. take it with you. It's gonna sit on this wall right back here. Whenever you wanna come in, your access card works 24 seven. You'll have a hot cup of coffee waiting for you. You can have as many as you want. Can we get the mug? It's back here. It's behind the white chairs. Uh, so I wanna give you with a lifetime membership to Switch Yards. Yes. Whenever you want. Yes. The name of the coffee shop is called Western and Atlantic. That was the name of the rail terminal that came into Atlanta in the early 1800s. Mayor Reed, the other side of Switchyard's downtown club. Um, we're going to keep this on the shelf. The access card makes something beautiful. That's yours. You can get into any door in the building. Lock up, guys. As an, as an, as an entrepreneur, he might steal your ideas or whatever. But uh, when you start your next company, uh, you know, it'll, you, you have a place to do it. I know a few people. <laughs> but here's your mug. It's going to forever be on the Switchyard's mug wall. That's worth gold here, you know. The, the, the fuel of entrepreneurs is fine. Can I just finish up one thing? I do want you all to know, um, guys, what's getting ready to happen in Atlanta? I mean, we're good right now. It's going to be amazing. I was looking at a heat map. I was looking at a heat map the other day, Michael, and while we certainly um, have a lot of room to grow in the B2C space, if you look at, look at a map of America right now, of course there's Silicon Valley and Palo Alto and all of the rest, and it's a massive circle, but then you basically run to LA, you run to Chicago, you run to Boston, you run to New York, you run to Austin, and then you come to Atlanta. And if we will dominate our space from the eastern border of Texas to the Atlantic Ocean and down from Maryland, D.C. and Virginia, um, I really do believe that we're going to change the city of Atlanta um, forever uh, in a powerful and dynamic way. So I thank you, and I'm rooting for every single one of you. If there's ever anything that I can do to help with your success, um, you let me know, and I'll come right over. Okay. We appreciate you coming. It means a lot. Thank you, man. Thank you.